Hawaii, the name America will always remember, the Navy honors fighting heroes of war in the Pacific, victories of Midway and the Coral Sea. Medals for gallantry in action. Here, two brothers, proud of their decorations. Men of the Army are remembered, too. Men who fought at Midway and men who did not come back. In an unprecedented ceremony, nurses of the Red Cross accept the awards for relatives of soldiers who gave their lives. America dedicating itself anew to the defense of liberty. High in the Pacific Northwest, forest giants that have stood for centuries bow to the demands of war. Spruce for building planes and gliders. Wood to take the place of precious metals. Lumbermen working from morning till night to fill the orders of industry. The government calls for 100 million feet of spruce alone. And by the train load, it rolls to the lumber mills. In the Hollywood home of Movie Land's Mickey Mouse, artist Walt Disney orders his famous cartoon characters into battle dress. They're in popular demand as emblems for the armed forces. Here's how an Air Corps insignia is created. This assignment is for the Marines Amphibious Force a very tough commando tortoise ready for the warpath. And he comes to life before your very eyes. A Lockheed Hudson bomber ready for delivery is decorated with ferocious Pluto. The inscription tells the story. He's itching for a fight. Giant balloons guarding strategic areas along the coast reveal America on the alert. At defense centers, the location of each balloon is plotted upon a map, all a part of an elaborate system designed to protect vital objectives from attack from the sky. Orders are flashed to send the big bags aloft. Anti-aircraft crews spring to their posts. But uh, where are the guns? The science of camouflage developed to perfection. What looks like a farm home to an enemy flyer really houses the weapon to bring him down. Entire buildings slide back on rollers and hidden guns are ready to throw hot steel into the sky. An innocent enough haystack, not worth wasting a bomb on, conceals a rifle ready for action. A tennis court slides open, and another crew awaits the enemy. The alert is flashed. Send up the balloons. And America takes a page from the British balloon barrage over London. The sausages that keep bombers too high to do real damage are on guard over America. Training sled dogs for service in the Arctic is the job of this northern United States Army post. Yes, they recruit them young. Six weeks is their draft age, and they're ready to be inducted. Army veterinarians give each one a thorough examination and pass him along just like any two-legged rookie. Eskimos, Malamutes, Siberians, they'll soon be packing arms and ammunition in the cold northern theater of war. Chinese army reorganizes to take the offensive. Trained by America's famous General Stilwell, veteran of the Burma campaign, and their own General Sun, 
The Chinese are preparing for the supreme test. Wounded, battle-scarred troops beg for another chance at the invader. And as rapidly as American doctors can pronounce them physically fit, they are sent to rejoin their regiments in the field. Medals are awarded United States officers for their gallant leadership and aid to China. And now, new equipment arrives from America. Trucks, big guns, guns that are a match for any of Japan's. Expert artillery instructors explain the mechanism of the modern weapons. Weapons that have come by cargo planes and convoys over mountain trails and continents to help us staunch a lie of the United Nations. On the rifle range, infantrymen train with guns the like of which they've never known before. For many, it's their first real instruction in marksmanship. No armchair commander, General Stilwell goes with them into the field. A checkup of targets reveals bullseye shooting, shooting that may write new chapters in history when next they meet the Japs. For the first time in six long years, soldiers of China have waged war on the other side of grim mortars like these. Now China has the shells, the equipment, the communication lines, and the order is fire. Speaking to Chinese troops in their own language, General Stilwell tells them they can count on full support from America. He said, if we go back properly proportioned and properly equipped, we can throw the Japs out. Fighting words from a fighting American, and China's armies are ready to march again. At Chongqing, Wendell Wilkie calls on Madame and General Chiang Kai-shek. President Roosevelt's personal envoy, he goes to the front to see for himself China's new armies in the field. In the trenches, his guide is Captain Zhang, eldest son of the Generalissimo. They become warm friends. Handling a rifle is nothing new to Mr. Wilkie. He used one in the last war. With General Stilwell, he meets Brigadier General Cheneau, leader of the famous Flying Tigers. And now, on a parade ground not far from the front, a full division of China's new mechanized forces passes in review. Lean, hard, well-trained men. Men who are determined to throw the Japanese out of China.